10x, 10 times productivity. There's a lot of debate on whether or not there are even the existence of 10x programmers is a real thing, but I don't want to talk about that right now because I'm noticing a more fundamental problem with 10x, which is people don't even understand what 10x looks like. And you might be thinking, uh, this couldn't be simpler. One person does one and the other person does 10. And that's true. But it's only true in the most simplistic of situations. Let me give you a couple examples. Here I have two stores. Maybe they're side by side. And one store is bringing in $100,000. And the second store is bringing in $145,000. That doesn't look like 10x. That looks like 45%. But stores have overhead. So let's say that rent and expenses and everything comes to $95,000. Then store one is making $5,000 and store two is making $50,000. That's 10 times more profit. That's only with overhead. Let's add compounding interest into this. So here I have a loan for $100,000 at 10% interest. One person's paying $839 a month. The other person's paying $2,124 a month. Again, doesn't look like 10x, looks like two, two and a half times. But this first loan is going to take 50 years to pay off. And that second loan is only going to take five years. That's 10x. Now, 10% seems like a lot of interest right now, but in the programming world, 10% is really, really low. To get 10% return on using a method or a piece of software means you have a method that's called twice or two users that are using your software. So let's look at a higher rate of interest. Here I have a $100,000 loan at 100% interest a year. And I have one person paying $8,333 a month. Now, you already know I'm going to do 10x. You know this is a 50-year loan. And therefore, you know the second loan is going to be five years. But the question is, how much more money does that person have to pay to 10x the situation. And it's obviously not going to be 10x. That's, that's 80,000. The loan would be almost paid immediately. Right? Maybe 30,000 or 20,000, 10,000. It turns out it's only $8,402. It's $70 more a month on $8,000. And it's very, very against our intuition to think the third significant digit is where this 10x would occur. But can I get more extreme? Here I have two people. Each of them are paying $100 a month for 17 years into the same retirement fund. That's the exact same thing. That cannot be 10x. It's the exact same thing. But does it start at the exact same time? Maybe person one starts paying into the retirement fund when they go to work at 20 and goes all the way till they're 37. Then they have the rest of their time, that same amount of time occurs for person two. But he doesn't start his retirement fund till he is 43. So even though it's the same amount of time, in one, it's accruing returns, accruing interest. And the second one, it's just dead time. And when they retire... One person has half a million dollars and the other has 50,000. The exact same thing, just done at different times. The thing that got me started thinking about this was a blog on mob programming. They had tried it out for a day and then they wrote up their results. And in it, they said, unsurprisingly, the team did not achieve 10x productivity. In fact, we found our productivity to be almost the same as it was before. Your mileage may vary, but as far as we're concerned, it's a resounding no. They then went on to say, is the product higher quality? Is there better test coverage? Is the code idiomatic and follow the best practices? Are the chances of a bug crawling into the product minimized? From our experience, this is the most emphatic yes on all the concerns listed above. Not only does having everyone together increase accountability and awareness, but mistakes made by more junior developers are more likely to be caught. Furthermore, when our QA engineer was in the mob, he gained a better sense of how to go about testing the feature as thoroughly as possible. So in the first section, they say, we did not achieve 10x. And then they go on to describe exactly what 10x looks like. It's just, it doesn't look like that today. It looks like at the end of the year, 
you've produced 10x. 10 times more at the end of the year, not 10 times more every single day. Hi, I'm Llewellyn Falco. I'm an Agile technical coach, and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that, you might also enjoy test-driven development versus behavior-driven development, seeing what the difference is between TDD and BDD, or you might like a deeper technical dive into practical refactoring, where we take a big, messy code base, and we take a piece by piece and a lot of little micro steps and tease it apart until it all starts to make sense. Enjoy.